Okay, so part two of rotoscoping workflow. So here I have my exported um, frames. And before I get, you know, too into the rotoscoping process without really thinking about it, we want to do some concept work. And so we're going to create a couple different style frames to explore different ways of working with this footage. Um, and you can do Photoshop with this. Um, if you're intending to use, you know, something else like Krita or another program, you're perfectly welcome to do that. Um, and use the tools available for that. But I'm going to show you how to do this in in Photoshop. Um, okay, so so essentially um, a style frame is a chance to explore color palettes, line quality, other things that really go into the design of a piece. And um, it's where you do your thinking for the rotoscope before you really start diving into dealing with these 60 frames, right? Because we don't want to start making these things without decisions already in place. So what we're just going to do is play around with one image and that way we can get a sense of both how long it's going to take us to go through all of these 60 frames and make them in that rich design style and also it might give you some good ideas you know like how you want to approach this footage what you want to get out of it. The first thing you're going to do is look at your frame sequence and just choose one frame that has, you know, a pretty strong pose. Um, I think this pose at the beginning is probably the strongest, so I'll just pick one of those. And I'm going to open that up in Photoshop over here. Um, and I'm going to use my tablet um, and just start playing around with different styles, different brushes, things like that. Um, so I'm going to do this on new layers because we don't want to mess up our source footage here. We always want to keep that intact. And get my brush presets out. So if you haven't done a ton with Photoshop, you know, I mean, there's tons of different brushes you can play with, and you can also download specialty brushes. Um, I've posted some links, um, some you pay for, some are free. Usually the ones you pay for are a little bit nicer. Um, so it might be worth 10 bucks to invest in a set of brushes that um, really suits your style. Um, let's put that one up as well. And I like to have my tool presets because in the tool presets, there's actually this really nice 2B pencil um, set here, um, which I like to use because it has, it kind of simulates a pencil setting. Um, so. I'm just going to unlock that and I'm going to make this a little bit lighter. That light. There we go. Just so I can see my line quality because this is going to disappear. Like this, this video um, footage is just not going to be shown at all, um, at least not in mine. Um, and so I'm just going to start, you know, drawing and see where my imagination takes me when I'm working with this. This is a great way to improve your drawing, by the way, is to just, you know, figure out how lines work um, by tracing from actual photographs and stuff and like how it helps you feel how perspective works, like what does the hand look like when it's at that angle, how does the neck connect to the head. And one thing that I'm just taking note of is like, well, okay, so how long does it take me to just trace the figure? You know, it's taking me a couple minutes just to trace it. Um, and then, you know, if I'm going to have to color and um, add any other sorts of fancy details, you want to take that into account and just realize, well, you've got 60 of these frames to do. And, of course, at the beginning, it's going to take you a little bit longer once you really get into it. You know, you're going to become more efficient as you go. Um, and that's why taking note of the time at the beginning might help you make some better decisions about what your rotoscope is going to look like. Okay, so there's a nice pencil drawing. So that's kind of just like straight up pencil. Um, really not that exciting as far as rotoscope goes. I mean, you know, whatever, it's an outline. Um, so what can I do to make this a much more interesting image? So you could do anything that you like comes to your imagination. You could put on it, you know, an animal head, like in When the Day Breaks. You, can, you could morph like Joseph Pierce does. Um, you could do every frame in a different brush stroke and style like Jeff Schur. 
Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can approach it. Obviously, it's really your imagination. Um, but what I want to see in these style frames is you exploring some different things that really resonate with you personally um, and how things look. So I'm going to play around with some color a bit, maybe some different brushes. I'm going to load in some interesting things with background. So I have some textures here. Hey, that looks like better already. Coolness. Um, I know what happens if I invert that. Maybe I'll put a little filter on it. I'll change the hue a bit. Okay, so this, you know, could definitely work. Um, it did take me a while. I think it, I would be a little bit more efficient now that I know which colors I want to use and everything. Um, but I do want to try one more version of this, um, something that's a little bit looser, might be a little more fun to draw, and that really sort of eliminates some of the details and emphasizes more of the posture. Um, so I put all of my layers here in one folder so I can keep track of them and then I'm just going to turn that one off and I'm going to start a new layer. Um, and I've got my source footage down there. Let me go to my tool presets um, and get something new. We'll start, we'll start with this watercolor brush uh, and then I'm going to pick a color that will look good on this background here. Um, and I'm going to just keep it really nice and loose. Um, that's about a good size. Just going for kind of basic shapes here. And again, you can't see much, but when I turn the background on, you can kind of see, oh yeah, there's the, um, the look that is coming out of this. So I'll keep this layer on here, get the underlying structure. So there's kind of like a base layer, so I think what I might do is I might take some um, pencil or something. Mm, some markers here. Marker, if I lower the flow on this, I can get this really nice dry marker look. I'll go back to this, start a new layer. Here we go a little bit lighter. And in this, I'm sort of looking for the underlying structure while still maintaining a little bit of the integrity of the actual uh, shapes. And in doing this, I'm trying to think of the overall sequence of Rotoscope, not just the individual image, um, because I'm thinking like, well, what will it look like if I go through every frame like this and have this sort of like swirly, chaotic line work inside the figure each time? Well, there's going to be a lot of vibration, but if it's held within the bounds of the figure and it matches the movement, that kind of human movement will provide a counterbalance to the chaotic movement of the line work. Um, and so that might be something that's really fun to try. 
Um, let's give it a few bit more variations. Add some highlights. Pulls things forward and foreshortening. Got to pull this hand out so it stays. And you know, I'm thinking like, well, what could I do to signify that emotional shift? Well, I could shift the color. I could uh, change the quality of the line, perhaps um, make it thicker, make it thinner. Um, so I'm thinking now more in terms of like, well, what can I do design-wise to progress um, and represent the emotional quality of the footage that I have of that shift that's going on. I think this girl needs a little bit of color right there, perhaps, just to make her pop out a little bit. Um, so, you know, something like this, as far as the drawing time involved, was quite a bit less. I mean, it took me maybe five minutes or so to make the one frame, um, whereas something like this, um, required a little bit more detail. It'll probably take me about 10 minutes of frame. Um, now, that's not to say that you shouldn't do something complex like this because this can look really beautiful. Um, it really just depends on what your personal style is and what you want to pursue. Um, but do keep in mind that there are 60 frames. But rotoscoping can be kind of fun. I mean, you put on a movie or something, or your favorite podcast, and it's like kind of, it's you almost zen, zen out on it because um, it's really, once you've done these style frames, you have the design thinking done, and then it's just putting in the work to actually get it um, moving. If you want to experiment more, you're more than welcome to. Um, you can also just do some simple color changes, you know, like what would happen if instead I made her hair uh, a different color, like blue. I always wanted blue hair. Okay, so here I have two different approaches, one being kind of very more abstract and simple, one being a um, more realistic approach. You know, I can do another one that really realizes basic shapes or something like that. And what if I made this character all out of circles? <laughs> what you need to do. This is essentially development. This allows you to work through some of your visual ideas. Uh, this is a process that you know all studios go through, all artists go through as they're basically doing their thinking before they do the really heavy time intensive work. And if you do your thinking ahead of time, then that saves you work in the long run. So spend some time playing around with Photoshop. This is also a good chance for you to get used to your tablet, to get used to some brushes. Um, uh, if you download brushes, you can download presets, um, and you install them just by loading presets here. If you download some brush sets, those are ABR files, um, you can load them here in the brush panel. And so I would suggest just figuring out how you like to work in Photoshop at this point. And then when we get to really churning through those 60 frames uh, later on this week, you'll be ready to go.